Wow. Oh, God. On this episode... What the hell is this? Tears for Gentle Titan. <laughs> and it's still coming. As Rob tackles one of his most challenging surgeries ever. Whoa. That's massive spleen. Feeling a bit yucky. Elderly Tigger's mysterious symptoms have Alex extremely worried. His heart's racing. Oh, mate. Mm -hmm. And Scott is smitten. Hello, beautiful. With another expat Aussie. She smells like home. I think it's true love. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. You make my world a better place. Come on, there's your girl. At Rob's practice near Sydney, Annette has arrived with the family's much-loved seven-year-old German Shepherd, Titan. You go see Dr. Bob and get you all better. I was concerned because he was putting on a lot of weight and went to the vet just for his regular checkup, and he did an ultrasound and said it, his spleen is really enlarged. Now a very nervous Annette is back to find out if medication has had any impact on the dangerously large spleen. Hey kid, hello big boy, how are you? Hello, let's go. Come on. Come on. Big day. Can you go on in, in now? Let's go, see Dr. Rob. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, it's a, it's, moment, it's a okay. really big thing. I mean, we, we'll run some bloods quickly, make sure yep. he's okay. Uh, I'll ultrasound again. If the spleen is big, we x-ray the chest first because it shows up on the lungs on an x-ray if he's got secondary tumours in the lungs. All right, big boy, let's check it out. Rob is concerned that if the spleen is cancerous, deadly tumours may have also spread to other vital organs. German shepherds get a cancer of the spleen called a hemangiosarcoma. It's malignant, it's all the blood vessels forming these cancers and it metastasizes, in other words, it moves. It will initially go on the liver. If that's the case, then we can't. We'll just keep giving palliative care, keep him happy for as long as possible. But that's something I will hate to break that news to Annette if that's the case. Right, so we'll get some blood, I'll check yep. him over. Okay. Then we'll do the next step, which is the ultrasound. Yep. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine. Here, big boy. Good boy. Titan is just, I know it's, everybody says this, but he really is my very, very best friend. And he's just been my constant. He's really placid, really gentle. He's a big, big baby. With Annette bravely holding back tears, Rob begins the ultrasound to check the size of Titan's spleen. Wow. Oh, good God. That is enormous. I don't like that at all. Good girl. Good girl. In Isleworth, animal rescuer Emma has brought in a very special... Hello. Hello. <laughs> ...and talkative patient to see Scott. Hello. Come on, baby. Good girl. I'm really passionate about the animals. I, do. I love them all like they're my own. Ruby is a galah, a cockatoo species, and like Scott, comes from Australia. We all adore her. We just love her. She's such a great character. She's funny, she, she talks, she sends kisses. She's just brilliant. Ruby, come on, baby. Hi there, Emma, how are you? Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Oh my gosh, who is this beautiful little one? This is Ruby. Hi, Ruby. Hey. Come on, gorgeous girl. Oh my Say gosh. Hello. I've got to get this bird out of that cage. <laughs> Come on, coming into the consult room. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Reminds me of home. Oh, we have these flying over the skies of Brisbane. Hello. Gosh, hello, beautiful. She even smells like home. <laughs> you smell like a gum tree. 
Oh my gosh. I think it's true love. <laughs> <laughs> She's found her forever home. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm really hoping that my wife isn't watching this because I've developed quite the eye for Ruby. She is quite the ravishing Aussie bird and she's just lovely. But what's the reason she's here today? So if you can see just underneath here, there's a lump. Oh. Quite large, it's quite prominent. That's a whopper, isn't it's it? It's in the way, really, really uncomfortable for her. I mean, it, it's almost like she's laid an egg and it's got stuck. Yeah, yeah. That is not a, a pretty sight, is it, baby? Oh dear. Every animal that we deal with, you form some sort of bond and attachment to. So I'm feeling very nervous for Ruby. Okay, so looking at that, I'm hopeful that it's gonna be something called the lipoma, which is a fatty growth. Yeah. And very common, these types of tumors grow quickly. We absolutely need to perform surgery. There is no question about that. But the challenge of anesthetizing birds is that the anesthetic itself can be quite risky. Birds breathe in a different way. They have air sacs which retain some of the air that they're breathing in. So the anaesthetic is always really difficult. Sometimes they can just simply die under anaesthetic. So I know that's upsetting. Yeah. Yeah. She's got a big space in everyone's heart. So. Yeah. Wow, oh good God, that is enormous. At his New South Wales practice, Rob is alarmed at the size of young Titan's spleen after weeks of treatment. I can't see any lumps or bumps on it, but two that's big. It goes look, right up the stomach. That is ginormous. I'm doing this ultrasound Titan just to see if it's shrunk. Well, far from it, I'm just thinking it's bigger. I'm right down on the bladder and I can see the spleen and trace it all the way up to the stomach. So from one end of the abdomen to the other end, there's this horrid big spleen. I don't like that at all. Hey Gabe, we're getting rid of this for you big boy. It's way too big. I can't even, I can't get it all on the screen at once. I'm going to guess this is a big, big football. Rob must now break the news to a very anxious Annette. Okay, can we see him before he's anaesthetic? Hey. The ultrasound Annette was just what we thought. We tried everything else. Yeah, get rid of it. I don't want him to get cancer. He's no, too valuable no, to, to the family. I know yeah, that. I so. can't lose my boy. No, that's tight. He's one of the family. Um, what do you do for your family? Well, everything and anything that's possible. Go, Rocco. We got Rocco when he was eight weeks old and he is just crazy. Titan was scared of him at first, that they've become really good friends. Being here on the farm, they just rumble and play all the time. Titan has been amazing with all three of my boys. I think Mummy's the favourite though. <laughs> Mummy is his Mummy's boy. You can sit here and wait for him and get your coffee, tea, whatever you want. When you hear music, you know everything's all right. It'll it be a good. while before you hear that. We'll play some music for him. Okay. Actually, for me. He likes music, so we'll play music. Good. Mummy always plays music. Okay. Mum will be there when you wake up. Love you. Okay. Hearing him cry for me, that just broke my heart. Sorry. He's just my everything. I just don't want to lose him. Hey, matey. I'm just going to lift him up if you're... He's got this blood all there underneath. Yeah, yeah, that's all. On the Gold Coast, Alex is about to treat an elderly cat whose owner brought him in when she discovered he's been bleeding. Actually, there's dried blood on his fur there, just around the back. It's, it's not actively bleeding at the moment. Oh yeah, I can see there, he's actually, it's definitely coming from his penis. There's fresh blood there, it's not dripping, but there's quite a lot of blood in the bottom of his cage. I might just give him some pain relief. Good boy. Alex suspects 14-year-old Tigger has a problem with his urinary system that's causing the bleeding. Hello, you feeling a bit yucky? Oh mate. 
One thing we should probably make sure of is that he hasn't had any access to rat bait yeah. or anything like that because that's going to start him bleeding. I think we've really got to get some more information from the owner. I suppose really I probably treat him like another human being, you know? Retired nurse Anne has had Tigger most of his life and regards him as her closest companion. He makes me get out of bed in the morning after all these years of shift work, you know. He comes up in the morning and he yaps at me as if to say, come on, I want my breakfast. Hello. <laughs> oh, God. I'm Dr Alex, I'm the vet that's going to be looking after your boy Tigger today. So tell me when you first noticed something wasn't quite right with Tigger today. I saw spots of blood on the floor. Yeah, okay. okay. So I grabbed him and he had been grabbed and put him up on the bench, lifted his tail unceremoniously and I could see blood. And then he was a bit whiny, you know, and he it had this piercing cry that you normally get, you know, when a cat's, when an animal's in trouble. Yeah. You don't have any rat bait around the area, like, um, you know, no, baits for... No, no, okay. No. Yeah, that's all right. We're going to get to the bottom of what's going on with him, but just all these little pieces of the puzzle mm. help to understand yeah. what might be going on with him. But on the other hand, it could be stress-related well, and I'll, part I'll of be, his urinary... I'd be beautifully surprised if, yeah. if, it, yeah. if there's nothing, you yeah. know, yeah. untoward. So I just want to go back and check on Tigger, and we'll make a plan together about what we're going to do, okay? All Thank right, you. and... Yeah, yeah, that's right. When Alex returns to Tigger and nurse Patrice... Very noisy. Very noisy. There's a new problem causing serious concern. I'm just going to have a listen to his chest because if he's having trouble breathing... It's very noisy. Is he? Okay, let's have a listen. It's all right. His heart's racing. You take a seat in there and we'll, we'll get started. Near Sydney, an emotional Annette has just left her beloved Titan, so Rob can prepare him for major spleen removal surgery. You ready? One, two, three. But first, crucial x-rays will determine if the surgery can go ahead. Let's have a look. We're in. Okay. The possibility of losing her beloved Titan is almost too much for Annette to bear. I'm scared now. I thought I was doing very well, but now I'm feeling really scared. I'm just taking him away just made it all like real. I just, I just want him to be okay. Ready, get tray. Really good news, it's all clear. There's nothing in the lung field that's at all worrisome. I'm so happy I can say to her, chest is clear, we can proceed with surgery. We're gonna get rid of this thing because it's been so big for so long. And with this new puppy and the way he's rambunctious playing, he could rupture people. Of course, it happens all the time with car accidents. They often have a ruptured spleen, they have to have the, the spleen removed. If he has a bad roll and puts a lot of pressure on it, boom, it ruptures, he could bleed to death. I'm going to go tell Annette at least a bit of good news, eh? No signs of cancer in the chest at all. Lung fields are really clear, heart's good sized, everything's fine, ready to go. Okay, it's just a spleen. Surgery okay. now. Good. Okay. okay. So birds are quite delicate animals yeah. and using anaesthetics on them, in some cases they can just simply die. In Isleworth, Scott is spelling out to rescuer Emma the dangers of surgery to remove a potentially cancerous lump from Galar Ruby. There is also the possibility that the tumour could be something not very nice. And I'm hoping it's a fatty growth, but sometimes it can also be something that is life limiting. Explaining the risks with Emma, I can see how emotional she is and she does shed a tear over her concerns for this gorgeous bird. She really has an amazing relationship with Ruby. She seems to absolutely love this little Aussie icon. It is upsetting to consider, but in this instance, we kind of do need to do something. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get rid of the lump and then you're not allowed to have it anymore. All right. 
Emma is worried, but agrees to proceed with the high-risk surgery. Say bye, Auntie Emma. I'm really, really anxious. My chest is so tight with worry. Thank you. Hi, guys. Hello. So look what I've got. Hello, you. I'm so excited to introduce you to the gorgeous Ruby. Ruby, Ruby. hello. So you can <laughs> see back here, she's got a nasty oh, lump. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. It's about as big as your head, isn't it, my love? Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes. So I take it we're taking that off? <laughs> yes. So the main things with bird anaesthetics is ensuring, of course, that they're breathing because they do go deep and shallow in anaesthetic very quickly. And then we'll do the quickest job possible to remove this mass and hopefully she can go back to Auntie Emma's house. Yeah. Yeah. After introducing Ruby to nurses Gina and Jason, Scott gives her a mild sedation. Good girl, it's all right. She's then placed in an oxygen tank to prepare her for surgery. It's just the best way that we can ensure that she gets enough oxygen in her system to avoid any issues with the anaesthetic. All right, you ready? We can, just here's a chin just there. If you use your finger just to get under there, that's perfect. Okay, great. All right, so everyone's happy. But before surgery gets underway, Scott makes a worrying discovery. It's so big and it's so it's actually attached to that skin, so I'm not going to be able to do what I thought I was going to do initially. You have to think not only can I take it off, but also can I close the skin that you leave? And that's going to be the big challenge with her. It's very noisy. I'm just going to have a listen to his chest. On the Gold Coast, Alex is worried about Tigger's breathing, with the 14-year-old cat gasping for air. His heart's racing too. Hey, mate, you're OK. OK, let's get him on some oxygen. While nurse Patrice tries to stabilise Tigger's breathing, Alex's main concern is the mystery bleeding. Just with that breathing, and I agree with you, his chest sounds are increased and the blood from the back end. I didn't see any blood in his mouth or anything. I don't have a good look, but hey, definitely. Whenever we see unexplained bleeding like this, we really need to act quickly because if he is bleeding internally, then we need to find out why and we need to stop the bleeding. We'll just go nice and slowly with him. So I'm just giving the leg up now to put an IV catheter in. We want to put him on a drip just until we work out what's going on. We know he's got some sort of issue with his urinary system. When we put this IV in, it gives us a chance to get some blood and we want to be able to run a blood test, look at how his kidneys are functioning, really look at all the parameters. Good boy. Whenever a male cat comes in and they've got their bleeding from the penis, we always worry about a blocked bladder. Male cats just don't have good plumbing in the urinary department and so they can get blocked up with crystals, bladder gets very large, they try and pee and they can't and it's really one of those life-threatening emergencies because if his bladder was blocked and he didn't get to veterinary help pretty quickly, he, he would die. Great boy. Denny! Hi! Hi! At the Lost Dogs home in Melbourne, Danny loves to start her day spending some precious time with the new arrivals. Oh, hello. Hi, darling. It really breaks my heart when I initially meet animals that have clearly come from hard times. Hey, you beautiful girl. Hey. They don't have anyone to care for them. And so being able to step in and be that person and be able to make a difference to their life it's just so fulfilling. Hi, you sweetie pie. But all too soon, Danny's called away. Hello. Oh, hello. I hear you've got a gorgeous little mama. You're here to meet Squeaky. Yes. Yeah. Stray dog Squeak arrived less than 24 hours ago and surprised everyone, suddenly giving birth to three puppies. You look very happy. Hey. Oh, you. you like being a mama, hey? 
So Squeak arrived and wasn't actually showing any indicators of being heavily pregnant. So it was a bit of a surprise the morning after when the animal attendants went to go and feed her. She brought one of her little puppies up as if it was a soft toy to show off. I believe she was found in an abandoned factory. No microchip, no ID found. It's so bizarre because she's such a friendly, well-adjusted dog. I know, she's dog. been a well-loved yeah, pet. She, we just want to get her back into a home as quick as possible. Let's have a little look at you. Here we go. Oh, hi. But before the little family can go into foster care, Danny wants to reassure Kara Sam that Squeak is in good health. I think she's definitely thin. Definitely underweight, for yeah. sure. Yeah. And uh, her coat condition, she needs a good bath and a good brush out. She is a bit skinny, so having a feel on her ribs for a condition there, we definitely need to fatten her up a little bit. As Danny checks the new mum, she notices something worrying on her nose. Got an interesting little coloured nose there. It's got a little patch, it's not pigmented. There's an area on Squeak's nose that's got no pigment. It's also got no hair, which is unusual. Maybe there's something working there. Wow. It's attached to that skin, so I'm not gonna be able to do what I thought I was gonna do initially. You have to think not only can I take it off, but also can I close the skin that you leave. In Isleworth, Scott is about to try to remove a potentially cancerous lump from an Australian galah named Ruby. I'm hoping the surgery will go well, but is this tumour malignant or benign? I won't know until I get in. Gosh, it's humongous. He's also extremely worried about how Ruby will cope under anaesthetic. Birds are so sensitive, they're so delicate, and even the best managed anaesthetic can lead with them, unfortunately, passing away. So that does increase the nerves. I can hear it there. Yeah, it's beautiful. I can hear it. Yeah, OK, that's good. So it's incredibly reassuring to be able to hear your patient's heart beating. Um, if you could hear my heart beating, you could hear that it's beating quite fast. <laughs> but it's a very precious little patient and actually I've grown quite fond of her. This is the main bit coming out now. Massive. The size of it. Oh, look. As big as her head. The main lump has now gone, but Scott discovers you'll have to remove even more potentially cancerous tissue at the risk of damaging vital nerves. It's just really annoying because it's normally lipomas in cats or dogs are like this, like, like almost like a breast implant, you know, and you just pop them out. This is not like that. This tumour, it's actually a lot bigger than I thought it was. It's very close to the vent, the kind of external opening, the, the bum basically of the bird. And so there is a lot of nerves there and it's really important that I manage those. This tumour is going quite deeply into Ruby's body and if I don't follow it and remove all of it then it'll just grow back and then it's pointless so I need to take the risk to get it out because there's, there's more risks to come if I don't. Oh, Ready? Etray, I'm so happy I can say that her chest is clear, we can proceed with surgery. Near Sydney, pre-surgery x-rays reveal Titan's lungs are cancer-free, so Rob can now begin the complex surgery to remove the German Shepherd's dangerously enlarged spleen. We've cross-matched his blood with a donor and we've got blood that we can give a transfusion to because that's the biggest worry. There's a lot of major blood vessels attached to the spleen. But even just trying to get a big spleen out, it can rupture. Just trying to lift the damn thing out, by all means, I'm certainly worried. So I'll be very, very happy to see the end of this spleen. So I'm just going to be very careful here because the spleen is right underneath this abdominal wall. If I cut that spleen, it's will hemorrhage. It could hemorrhage to death if I'm not alert enough, so I'll just be really careful getting through to the other side. Oh boy, this is, uh, yeah. 
This is not a lot of fun trying to get this one out. I almost don't know which end to start with. It is so big and curling onto itself. It's almost like I'm trying, trying to do a ball. It's weird. I'm having troubles lifting this spleen up because it's almost folded down one end. It's so big, it can't fit properly into this abdomen. This is one end coming out now, and that's the start of it. And it's still coming, and it's still coming, and it's still coming. It's bigger than a football, and it's way bigger than any normal spleen. God, and it's still coming. Ugh. Whoa, that's big. I'm glad we're here and we're out. We've got it out. That's a very massive spleen. So now, you can see all these blood vessels here, you know, th that feed in and out of the spleen. This is what we've got to tie all the these off. And then it's a matter of clamp and tie, clamp and tie. And then check those ties to make sure they don't let go. You know, these ties are keeping him alive. But I just don't need that pressure. And I've done a lot of splenectomies, but you know what? Every one of them is new. I'd be glad to see what the pathology says as well. At least one thing, he will have lost some weight just from this surgery. Gosh, that's massive. Rob's anxious to check Titan's liver for any telltale lumps or bumps, which could be cancer. So here we're good. Because he's such a big dog, we've got to sew all that hole up. So the first thing we're going to do is sew up the muscle. And it's got to be pretty strong, because remember, They've got four legs. He's all the weight of all the other organs is going to fall onto his tummy. Where I've sewn it up. With Rob now on the home stretch, he can finally breathe a sigh of relief in his own unique way. When surgery goes well, I do have this tradition that I play music for myself. I said to Annette, just listen up. If you hear the music, you know everything's going well. Hear it. Mambo, Napolitano questo è Mambo, non poco siciliano è un Mambo, che fa mi vita bella, I can dance a Mambo in Italy. When I tell my nurse, hear it, I can feel the music and I love it because this is elation, this is my life's work all coming good for me and I'm, I am so happy, I can't tell you. I am sure Annette is out there jumping on the seat, dancing away, so happy. Surely she's dancing to it, I would be. <laughs> oh my goodness, I want to get up and start dancing. Oh, I'm glad it's done. It was quicker than I thought it would be. I'm really happy. I just want to see it now. I'm so glad we've done it. Now I can start breathing again. I love it. Just got to look upstairs and say thank you. We got this one. Got an interesting little coloured nose there. It's got a little patch that's not pigmented. In Melbourne, Danny's checking an unusual lump on new mum Squeak's nose. She wants to make sure the little stray is well enough to go to a foster home. It doesn't feel like there's any growth. There's no sort of inflammation or crusting or anything going on that I can see. Might just have to keep monitoring that. With Squeak in reasonable health, it's time to check out her brand new babies. I'm just putting on some PPE gear today to protect the pups from any possible infectious diseases that I may have picked up around the shelter. Oh, look at you, you gorgeous little muffin! <gasps> The bright pink in their nose, which is what you want to see in a puppy, you want to see that bright pink mucous membranes. They've got great little suckle reflexes. This one's a little runt. Hey, just the little ones. We'll have to keep a close eye on you. The most important thing for pups is that they are feeding well from their mums and getting all their nutrition and antibodies. Squeak seems to be the most caring mum in the world. She's so attentive to her pups letting them feed happily, going and checking on them, helping them toilet. It's just a special little dog. Oh, I'm sorry to disturb your sleep, my sweet. 
huge relief to know that mum and pups are healthy. We just need to get them out of the shelter as quick as possible to maintain that uh, level of health. Third little puppy, hey. Are you going to be able to squeeze in there? Is it going to... If it's a bit squashy. Good job. Oh, oh gorgeous. Yeah. Waiting to take home the new family is experienced foster carer Annie. It's very important to me to like be a part of rescue. I think we've worked out that we've done 43 fosters now. Hello. Hello. Danny, this is Annie. Hi, Hi Annie. nice to meet you. And this is little squeak. Oh, <laughs> We've had puppies before, but we've never had a mum and puppies, and we've definitely never had puppies this young. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. Oh, We're going to be good friends. I mean, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a bit nervous. <laughs> no! Oh, look, you're a good mama, aren't you? I promise you. I'm taking good care of your baby, so I promise. Annie just seems like an absolute darling. She is so passionate and devotes so much time and energy into all of these animals, so thank goodness for people like her. See you later, darling girl, hey? You go rest up, miss. Is it flowing okay? He's really bruising up where I've put the IV catheter in and that's a worry that his blood's not clotting properly. So one thing we really do need to do is test his ability to clot blood normally. On the Gold Coast, Alex is trying to find out why 14-year-old Tigger has been bleeding from his urinary system. It's 122, full clot. Okay, that's good. Good to see that his blood's clotting. Yep, and he's your blood gas. All right, so his glucose level's up, but we know that he's pretty stressed, yeah. And he's anemic, okay. All right, so I think we've just got to look a bit further with the bloods. These initial blood tests show us that he's able to oxygenate his blood okay, and his electrolytes are normal, and he's able to clot his blood. These are all good things, but we don't have an answer of exactly what's wrong with Tigger. We need to go further with the blood test to see how his organs are functioning, like his kidneys, liver and things like that. So we're going to run some other blood tests and now look at that. But as the test results come through, the news is not good. What we can see already is Tigger's liver enzymes are really high. So functionally, his liver's not working properly. What we really need to do now is have a look at how his liver looks on ultrasound. So have we got some sort of abnormality there, like a mass? It's okay. All right, Tigger, he's okay. Anne was worried about cancer and seeing these bloods, I'm worried about cancer too. All right, all right. Good boy. This tumour is going quite deeply into Ruby's body and if I don't follow it and remove all of it, then it'll just grow back. In Isleworth, Scott has removed a large potentially cancerous lump from Galar Ruby. God, this thing, it goes so far in. But the amount of extra tissue he needs to cut out is more than he originally thought. You just can't find the heart rate at the moment. The extra time under anaesthetic makes him worried Ruby might not survive the operation. Is that slowing down? It was. It's All right now? It's okay now. Okay. That heartbeat, I can hear it there. I'll tell you what, it is reassuring hearing that heartbeat. You can tell everyone's nervous because everyone's quiet. as much as I dare. With Ruby's heart rate still a concern, Scott is sewing up the wound as quickly as possible. How's she doing? Is she alright? Thankfully there is enough skin to cover the area. The lump itself has stretched the skin quite a lot, so that's not such a big issue. No high fives just yet. We'll wait until she wakes up before we can celebrate. That was way harder than I thought it was going to be. 
I am so relieved that Ruby has made it through the surgery. There was loads of hurdles to jump. The anesthetic is always risky in birds. The mass was huge. It had huge roots going really deeply. And then I was a little bit worried, could I close it? Did I have enough skin? And I'm really glad that it's over. It's been a longer than I expected anesthetic just because the lipoma wasn't just superficial, it really was going right down and into her body. So it's just a bit of a nervous wait now for Ruby to wake up. Tigger's liver enzymes are really high. So functionally, his liver's not working properly. On the Gold Coast. Okay, Tigger, time for your ultrasound. Alex is conducting a scan on 14 year old Tigger, hoping the elderly cat doesn't have cancer. So I'm just looking up now at the liver because we know on Tigger's blood results his liver enzymes were very high, but on the ultrasound, the structure of his liver actually is surprisingly normal, which I wasn't expecting. So I'm just looking at the kidneys now and there's some loss of distinction there, but nothing that looks like a tumour or anything like that in those kidneys, which is good. After encouraging findings with Tigger's kidneys and liver, Alex now moves to the bladder. This isn't good. Yeah. There's something really nasty here in his bladder. It looks like there's a large tumour right at the neck of his bladder. I'm so sorry and that's going to be the reason for the blood. He, he's got a tumour. There's really no treatment options here for him. This is the worst possible outcome. Tigger, I'm so sorry. Good boy. Anne's going to be devastated. Alex must now break the sad news to owner Anne, who was given Tigger as a Mother's Day present almost 14 years ago. If you put him back to bed, and I'll give Anna a call. Okay. Good boy. Okay, we're done here. Near Sydney, marathon surgery to remove German Shepherd Titan's dangerously enlarged spleen is finally over. One, two, two three. It's been an agonising wait for devoted owner Annette. How is he? Is he alright? Oh, well, thank you. Would you like to see him? Oh, yes, He's waking yes, up. Yes, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Come yes, yes. okay, on, let's go. Wait, oh, come God. through, come through. Oh, look at you. Look at you. Honestly, inside I am glowing when I see someone that loves their animals so much. She's so relieved, she's in tears with relief and happiness, and they're tears of happiness. So this is his spleen if you want to have a look at that. Oh my God, it's massive. What is a normal spleen? Like what? About that size. So why? And a bit thinner than that. Why? Oh God, we'll send it off crazy. to pathology. I honestly think it's going to be a condition called just splinter megaly, just in a large splint. He's here. He's here now. So yeah, he's going to stay here tonight. I'm not going to be surprised if he goes home in 24 hours. Surgery went well. It went really well. I was so good. I'm so happy. I was so happy at the end. Yeah, he's had a giant splint removed. Get that. And he goes home. But yeah, very dogs are resilient. They're beautiful animals. Good boy. Good boy. I feel better. I feel good now that he walked into recovery and just seeing him, I feel so much better. I can't wait to get him home and my kids will be so happy. Come in. <laughs> oh, good thank job. you. A month after rescue dog Squeak unexpectedly gave birth to three puppies, the little family is thriving with devoted foster carer Annie. Puppies have been growing really well. The runt that we're a bit concerned about at first, she's actually like catching up to the other ones. The middle little girl is Molly. 
She's just the sweetest little thing. We actually think that she's going to be a lot like Squeak. And then you've got the big boy, which our little pet name for him is Chonkers because he's always just been that much bigger than the rest of them. But he's also the one, like the most, I guess, mature in terms of his development. So he's actually walking around a little bit. Squeak is going to the best possible home. She's going to a staff member at the Lost Dogs home, so she couldn't be in better hands. Hi, baby. Hi. Are you open? In Oswald. Ruby, the Australian Galah, is slowly recovering from high-risk surgery. It's really nice to see Ruby waking up. She's a real cutie, isn't she? Like, just so pretty and delicate. Animal rescuer Emma is waiting nervously to see the adored bird she's given a second chance at life. Can't wait to see her again. Knowing that she's all right is just an amazing feeling. Hi. <laughs> Here's Hello, your girl. Yes, she is. She's got some crazy neckwear which she is really unimpressed <laughs> with. Hi, baby. <laughs> the surgery went well, but it was a bit trickier than I thought, okay. uh, in that the, the tumour was sort of growing quite deep. I've managed to remove it, but it was challenging. But I think that we should get a good result here. Okay. And she went through the anaesthetic well, haven't you? And you're still, a, you're still a happy girl. <laughs> a little bit dozy, I think, aren't you? Now this lump is off, I really hope that Ruby's life will really begin. It was clearly a source of discomfort for the bird and it's gone now and hopefully she'll live a full and happy life. I'm pretty confident that the lump is not life limiting. So, so grateful to Dr. Scott and his team. They're amazing. Hopefully she'll be all right. Fingers crossed, yeah, she'll be going off to that new forever home, yeah. She is a sweetheart. If it happens that she doesn't end up finding the home, let me know. Yeah, I'll be giving you a call. Because, yes, I think she's just something quite special, actually. She is amazing. After all this time being a vet, I must say I'm still a sucker for someone who dedicates their life to rescuing animals. And Emma's just one of those people, you know. She just swoops in and rescues these animals that desperately need her help. So I'm always going to help people like that. Hi, baby girl. See you later. Thank you. Bye, gorgeous. See you later. Thank you. Bye. Say bye, Ruby. Bye. This is definitely the best feeling in the world, the best outcome. Ruby. Hi, Anne. It's Alex here from Animal Emergency Service. On the Gold Coast, Alex is calling retired nurse Anne with the sad news her much-loved cat Tigger has inoperable cancer. I don't think he's in actual pain, but certainly things are starting to not function properly in his body. The biggest concern for me is where that tumour is right in the neck of his bladder. It is going to obstruct his bladder. That's okay. Putting him to sleep. I think that's really where we're at, Anne. I think it's, it's time for Tigger. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Alex and Anne arrange a time for her to say goodbye to her adored companion of the past 14 years. He's had a great life and just listening to Anne's stories, this cat is a very special cat and although he's going to be missed, I think that he has had such a beautiful impact on all that have been around him. He's been a very loved cat, that's for sure. Hey, you poor fella. Good boy. Let's go. We go for a walk. A month after life-saving surgery to remove his dangerously enlarged spleen, German Shepherd Titan is back to his energetic self, enjoying walks with owner Annette. He's so happy to be home. I was very emotional um, for the whole week after the surgery. There we go. That was a good little walk. 
Titan didn't have a cancerous spleen, which was really good news. I'm very happy that I'm going to have Titan for a long time now. So Titan and Rocco play together all the time. He's like a puppy again. I'm so grateful to Dr. Rob, he was unbelievable. <laughs>